today on Main Street Living. Jesus says that if we really do love him, we'll keep his words. We keep his law words by living life his way. Like when we men see an attractive woman and we do not think bad thoughts. We keep his words when we help others, but do not just to be noticed. And when we forgive those who hurt us. The worship service will begin after opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are, knit by nature, sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he forgives, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament for lesson for today, for Pentecost Day, is from Genesis 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing what they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The epistle for Pentecost Day is from Acts 2. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them yet telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel text is from... John 14, the night Jesus was arrested. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, 
And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer m much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the message today is John 14, verse 26. Jesus said, But the Helper, 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Jesus says that if we really do love him, we'll keep his words. We keep his law words by living life his way. Like when we men see an attractive woman and we do not think bad thoughts. We keep his words when we help others, but do not just to be noticed. And when we forgive those who hurt us. This all reminds me of those two brothers arguing over who would get the first batch of pancakes. Their mom stepped in and asked, how would Jesus handle it if he were here waiting for pancakes? They knew and were quiet, but briefly. Then mom brought over the first batch and the one said to the other, okay, you be Jesus. That's not keeping Jesus' words. Jesus said we must take up our cross every day. In other words, I turn my focus from me and put others first. And we keep his gospel words by trusting him, even when we can't see him working. So when we worry, that's not keeping Jesus' words. He says, God takes care of the worthless sparrows, so you know he'll take care of you. When we feel all alone, like God forgot about me, we're not keeping Jesus' words, that he's always with you. It's hard to keep Jesus' words. If we could uh, obey the law and trust his promises, we'd really be living. Let's learn from the people of Babel. When Noah got off the ark, he blessed Noah's family to multiply and told them to fill the earth. Starting with just eight people, that meant they'd have to scatter. But some of Noah's descendants ignored God's words. They didn't want to be scattered clans here and there across the earth. They wanted to be in a city with a protective wall to trust in that wall instead of trusting in God to protect them. Today, you may be in favor of a wall on our border or not. Either way, our sinful nature draws us all to trust in various things that man makes, things other than God. And then we're not keeping doing Jesus' words that wherever our trust lies, that's where our heart is. And we forget our, his words that none of our so-called treasure on earth are reliable like he is. When God this said of Babel, let's confuse their language or nothing will be impossible for them. It can sound like he doesn't want you to succeed. But they were charging headlong, full speed ahead against God's word. Of filling the earth and if God had not scattered them they would have been united in doing all kinds of sin there's nothing wrong with having goals God prefers that to sitting around not letting him use you but let's remember God's words like in James 4 don't say I'm going to do this or that say if the Lord wills I'll do this or that today we have a name for Babel's way of thinking humanism and it's all too popular. It pretends that we humans can do whatever we set our mind to. So who needs God? And even in Christ's church, a related thought is that we can say what is a sin and what isn't. Some justify it by pretending it's different now. If we think like that, we forget Jesus' words that even when heaven and earth disappear, his words, his truth will remain. And even in Christ's church, we can be like Babel, seeking strength and security in numbers. So in that regard, it's okay for Christ's church to have different denominations. It's easy, for example, for us to forget his words, go into all the earth, telling others about him. So by having several different denominations, there are several mission efforts going on instead of just one. And if all eight of the churches in my own town were one big happy one, we might find comfort in our big size. But in a small congregation, we know we need to trust God to keep us going. Some say don't discuss religion, such as around relatives that worship at a different church. That can be awkward with our differences. But those differences make us each ask a very healthy question. What does God say about this or that topic? It's a good reason to remember Jesus' words by going back to his word. Yes, 
it was great that some could speak in foreign languages on that Pentecost of Acts 2. But is it so important today? Jerusalem at that time was full of Jews from many foreign nations. They were in town for Pentecost, an annual high holy day commanded through Moses. And they'd be going, they'd be going back home soon, so there wasn't time for Jesus' followers to learn the language. So the Holy Spirit gave them what they needed, ability to speak those languages. Now they could tell those foreigners who believed in the true living God that Jesus is the true living Savior God promised. What a plan God had for taking his saving words to the nations. Makes me ask, for what purpose is God giving me his Holy Spirit? It won't be for anything very showy, like speaking in tongues, but it will be for something very important. And it goes back to why Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit. Not so you do showy things, but using his words, to bring to your memory all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit helps remember Jesus' words, and that's how he creates faith in you, fosters and strengthens faith in you through his words. Just like he says in his words, for example, in John 5. Just like he created everything through his word. And loving Jesus and keeping his words, doing what he says, flows from the faith he gives you through his words. But faith is an ongoing struggle, isn't it? Paul explains that once the Holy Spirit is working in you, there's a civil war going on inside. The Holy Spirit pulls you one way, and our sinful nature pulls us the other. Good thing for us. The Holy Spirit doesn't wait around to see whether we pass the obedience test and then come into us. If that's how he works, we'd never have him because without him working in us, we flunk obeying God all day long. It's like the Pentecost of Acts 2. Jesus' followers weren't working at qualifying for the Holy Spirit. They were just there, gathered to hear God's word. And suddenly God sent the Holy Spirit in on them. And when Peter told the pagan Cornelius and his whole pagan house, Jesus' words, the Holy Spirit came into them. It goes back to the night Jesus was arrested. He said the Father would send the Holy Spirit, and today he does still. So yes, with our sinful nature, it's impossible to keep Jesus' words, to do what he tells us to do, and to trust his promises. But the Holy Spirit works in us to do something way bigger than speaking in tongues, that is, to keep Jesus' words. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. I'm Reverend Scott Seiler, the president of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and one of the preachers on this program. Main Street Living has been on the air since January 6, 2002, thanks to God directing and blessing this program. For these many years, it has been our mission to help you to know and trust the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is free to us, but it costs Jesus his very life. Sometimes we use the word grace as an acronym to express this good news. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace, willingly given by our triune God because He loves you so much. Today you have heard good news like this on our program. Thank you for tuning in today to Main Street Living. We ask that you pray for God's continued blessing upon this program and please consider giving a gift to support this ministry and keep it on the air so that many others may know God's saving grace for them. You may send your gift to this address, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Tune in again next week to Main Street Living. And until then, remember that God loves you so very much and that His grace God's riches at Christ's expense is something you can count on every day of your life.